Hey Wasip, how are you I hope you all doing great, and as you seen in the thumbnail, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto awaken his power in early stage, Naruto Ino couple. This is part 2, and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe, let's get in the video. Naruto was trying to disperse his sage chakra, so that when Lee hit him, it wouldn't reflect the damage and add even more of it back at him. The sage did the only thing he could do. He quickly turned around while holding her, so Rock Lee's assault wouldn't hit Hanabi, and waited for Lee's to start beating on him. Just as Lee was about to send Naruto flying with a charging jump kick is when a very outraged Hanabi regained her thoughts. She grabbed Naruto by his trench coat and slammed him up against a nearby wall. You kissed the Hokage. She screamed. Rock Lee flew right by them at an amazing speed and crashed into a thick wall with his flying kick leading the way. He crumbed the wall right on top of himself. Naruto blinked a few times before forgetting about Lee and said. Um yeah. So what? He asked in a confused manner. The young Hyuga yelled. You kissed the Hokage. How could you kiss her? She's three times your age. That's Suyui. She said grossing herself out with a mental picture of Naruto and the Hokage together intimately. Naruto blinked a few times clearly not sure why she was making a big deal out of this before finally telling her flatly. She's like the mother I never had. Of course I love her. What's wrong with giving someone you love like family a kiss on the cheek? Is that you got family so cold to each other that you show no signs of affection toward each other at all? Lee had just picked himself up out of the wall he smashed and was totally confused as he dizzily swayed back and forth. While Naruto's victim is yelling at him for kissing another woman. And the Hokage at that. But it was just on the cheek and he said she was like a mother to him. Well there is nothing wrong with kissing a mother figure on the cheek. But his victim, that he seemed about to molest, is chewing him out and he is not smacking her around or anything. Lee was lost in his thoughts for some time. Anabi was shocked again, but this time she blushed a dark shade red when she realized her mistake and the relationship between Naruto and the Hokage wasn't of the intimate type. Oh crap when did I become a pervert? I'm getting just like Hinata. How could I have even thought of that? It was just a kiss on the cheek. I've totally blown this out of portion. I'm Thayu Gairis, I have to keep up the most noble of images. She thought nervously. She then looked around at all the people that had stopped dead in the tracks staring at the two ninjas. She panicked. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Not good, not good. Father's going kill me for tarnishing the Hyuga name. Naruto's stomach growled loudly breaking her out of her panic attack. Erg. Look Hanabi let me explain the situation to you. Rock Lee is distracted for a minute, Guy Sensei is off to get the Hokage for Kami only knows what reason and I'm freaking starved. We are leaving if I have to carry you. Got it. He stated as he grabbed her wrist and led her down the street. She blinked then nodded her head unknowingly. They were a few blocks away before she realized what was going on. Um where are you taking me? She squeaked in a very high voice when she came back from her latest episode of being shocked. She was drawing up images of Naruto dragging her off into the woods to do unspeakable things to her. Naruto actually let go of her and covered his ears thinking he was being attacked by a sound ninja attack. Ouch what was that for? Are you trying to attack my sense of hearing? The sage said while peering over at her. Um he said while digging in his pocket to retrieve the free meal tickets from Tsunade. He procured them, pulling them out of his pocket and stared at them for a moment. We are going to the Bounty Earth and see. It looks like a sushi and steak house. We're almost there and I'm starving. He reiterated. The sage grabbed her wrist again and led her down the street. They finally made it to the restaurant and Hanabi was finally not so shocked at everything Naruto did. They both stepped inside the mid-sized establishment. All the tables were made of a black wood and trimmed in a gold-looking metal. On the walls were mostly giant fans that were black with golden flowers on it. The fireplace mantle was covered in purple velvet with a small 810 picture of each of the Hokage's from first to fifth and there was a blank frame at the end. The place seemed fairly dim compared to the outside sunny day. The place wasn't very busy. Out of the 20 or so tables there wasn't but about 5 that had people at them. The only people she did recognize were high-ranking officials. This was probably a rather expensive place to get lunch she decided. A small dark-haired young woman in a tightly wrapped kimono that decorated was just like the rest of the restaurant, black with gold flowers came up to the couple. How many are in your party? She asked with her eyes squinted and she gave them a short bowing. Naruto said. Two, here is our tickets from the Hokage. He held out the VIP tickets. The hostess got up from her bow and finally opened her eyes to see who she was seating. Her fake smile turned into a real one as she looked at Naruto eyeing him up and down. She took the tickets barely looking at them and led them to a door at the back and opened it. Please sit wherever you like. She beamed while leading them into the private room. Inside was a huge oval oak table with 14 cushy black leather chairs. Anabi guessed it was set up so the council could come and eat while discussing business. Naruto went to the middle of the table and sat down, and the hostess put a menu in front of him. 
The Nabi realized she was being rude standing at the door and took the seat on the opposite side of the table from Naruto. The hostess placed a menu in front of her. I'll be back in a few minutes for your orders. She said while never taking her eyes off Naruto or removing her smile. The hostess quietly closed the door behind her. Naruto too went over the fancy menu a few time and still didn't know what the heck any of it meant or what the place even served. The RRR, why do they have to use such formal names for everything? I can barely understand any of it. He thought. Which one of these is Raymond Amit? After a few seconds of looking at the menu, Hanabi had decided on the seaweed fried rice with greens and shrimp. She also decided that she wanted the honey glazed swallow's nest with vanilla ice cream for dessert. Naruto looked at the menu again and again and still didn't understand what to order or what the hell it was that he was ordering if he did order anything. Hanabi who was used to eating at upscale restaurants all the time could tell Naruto was totally out of his element. She smiled thinking. Heh <laughs> the so-called hero of the town being whipped by a menu. It's so laughable, but we are going to be teammates and as much as I hate to admit it. He is kinda. Cute. Erg Hanada get out of my head. She mentally screamed with frustration. After three minutes of staring at the menu Naruto finally gave up on it and promptly got up and walked over the top of the table. He plopped down in the chair right next to Hanabi. He scooted his chair right up to her so their elbows were touching. Hey Hanabi-chan, what is all this stuff on the menu? I've never heard of any of it. Naruto said clearly confused while pointing at the menu. She went a dark shade of pink. And there he goes again invading my personal space. No wonder Sakura was always punching him. She was probably just trying to get him out of her personal space, and why the heck is he calling me Chan? We practically just meet for crying out loud. Naruto put his hand on her forehead and put the back of his other hand on his forehead while still holding the menu. Hanabi Chan, you look flushed. Are you feeling okay? He said out of concern. Hanabi mentally cursed herself. Erg, I've got to stop spacing out. You don't seem to have a fever. He said with a concerned look on his face. Um, I'm fine, it's just a bit warm in here. She said shyly trying to get her air of nobility back. Ah, I guess it is a bit warm in here. Naruto said as he nodded in agreement. He reached into his pouch and pulled out a small stone. He held it in the palm of his open hand with his arm fully extended and charged it with chakra. Then he formed four air blades and turned them slightly at an angle. The blades started to spin at a quick pace. He stood up and held the strange jutsu over them and let it go. It stayed in the air right where he left it. Naruto then sat back down like nothing had happened and looked over at Hanabi who was noticeably uncomfortable. She stared at the strange jutsu slightly fearful manner. She didn't know many ninja that could produce chakra so dense that it was visible, but she did know all the jutsu she had seen like it was highly dangerous. What's wrong now? He asked while scrunching his eyebrows together. You don't feel better? She finally stopped staring at the wind-bladed rock and looked over at him. Is that thing dot safe? She asked a bit strained as she pointed to it. He looked at her for a long moment slightly confused. Well, don't go sticking your fingers in it and it is. He stated. She went back to looking at it and noticed there was a nice breeze coming from it blowing down on the two of them. Oh I get it. It's a fan. That's kinda of sweet. Wait what am I saying? Who the hell in their right mind makes a fan like that? I swear if he doesn't kill me with one of his jutsus, I'll end up dying from a heart attack from his shocking personality. Naruto was looking at Hanabi with a very serious look on his face when she came back from here in her thoughts. Anabi chan I've got one important question for you. He held up his menu in front of him while taping his finger on it with a very serious look on his face and said. Which one of these is Raymond? His eyes were very intense. Anabi blinked a few time processing the odd request. She looked over the menu and then looked at Naruto, then back over the menu, then back to Naruto before saying. There is no Raymond on the menu. She stated. Naruto's eyes went wide and he had a look on his face like someone died. I sensei burst right through the door to the Hokage's office without opening it. Hokage-sama. He yelled skidding to a halt right in front of the desk as the debris from the door showered Tsunade's office. Tsunade covered her face when she heard the crash like this had happened many times before. The Ashi jumped into full defensive tojutsu form and Kakashi ducked behind the Hokage at the sound of the thunderous crash. Hokage-sama. He yelled as he panted and held the stitch in his side. The Hokage rolled her eyes as she lowered her arm what is it this time guy. She obviously wasn't happy and sounded a bit annoyed with him. He huffed a few times to catch his breath and then inhaled sharply. It's Naruto. He looks like he's kidnapped some poor Hyuka girl and is planning on doing all sorts of lewd things to her. He had her at knife point and the poor girl was in such shock and horror. He said using over-exaggerated hand and arm movements to the point of being silly to emphasize his point. You've got to do something. My Lee is out there trying to stop him now. You know he doesn't stand a chance if Naruto gets serious. He begged her and continued on, but was talking so fast no one understood any of it. After he finally ran out of breath and started panting. 
The Hokage rolled her eyes at the hyperactive Jonin and sighed. She reached on top of a pile of paperwork and retrieved a folder. She opened it and pulled out a photo. Is this the girl? She asked slightly annoyed and tired of everything while holding the photo of Hinaba Huga. Yes. Hokage-sama that's the cut. He just noticed the Huga clan leader in the room simmering with rage and hanging on every word he said. Young woman. He corrected himself mid-sentence, suddenly very self-conscious of the situation. The Hokage's head had a vein starting to bulge in her forehead. Did you see any of these so-called lewd acts that you're speaking of? She said accusingly. I was suddenly on the defensive with his open hands shaking back and forth in front of him. Well not exactly, but I could see it in his beady eyes. He said half crouching pointing at his eyes as he shifted them to and fro suspiciously. The vein in Tsunade's head bulged even bigger. She started to speak slowly through clenched jaw. So you're telling me you just ran here leaving your student Rock Lee to fight Naruto because of something you thought might be going on and didn't bother to confirm it. She spat like she was spewing venom. I sensei was backpedaling from the Hokage's killing intent. Um will you see. Naruto. I mean. You know re. Recently has gone. Um to. To be rather um playboy so to speak. So I just dot assumed. He said fearfully. The Hokage snapped and grabbed the first object she could get her hands on. Which unlucky for Guy happened to be a three-pound brass paperweight nameplate from the front of her desk that had the name Hokage Tsune deeply engraved on it. She hurled the nameplate at near supersonic speeds, hitting Guy Sensei in the gut, sending him flying out of her office door. The RGHH the nerve of him. She said enraged as she angrily collapsed back down into her chair rubbing her aching head. After a few long and uncomfortable moments for both Hiyashi and Kakashi. She sighed in defeat and said. Kakashi if I retire as Hokage will you take the job? She asked. Kakashi froze as at images of himself getting challenged to a duel of strength by Naruto popped into his head. He suddenly sweat dropped and poofed into smoke as a single piece of paper slowly wafted over to her desk landing right in front of her. She took her he head out of her hands and picked it up. Out of body back in an hour was all the note said. She mumbled to herself. Chicken. The ashi wanted to leave right at the moment Guy Sensei had said Naruto was putting the moves on his daughter, but being a clan head had it downsides too. Like always being respectful to those in higher standings and the council. If you would excuse me Hokage-sama. He bowed respectfully and quickly headed for the door. Hey is she? Tsunade warned him as he turned around clearly angry she has stopped him. He stood still and waited for her to speak. You don't actually think I'm going let you crash their time to get acquainted to you? She said as a warning with her usual fake smile that he knew was a warning. The ashi knew he didn't have much wiggle room in the matter. He then smiled back at her. If I can't force my way there, I'll entice her there. He suddenly and without warning he said. Drinks are on me, sucker. Tsunade thought as she grinned. That's the only reason I go there. The food is horrible. There is only like three things on the whole menu that I'd ever eat again willingly. That's why I gave the tickets to Naruto in the first place. He'll eat anything. The hostess came in with bread and some strange oil in a small dish. She set the items down near them and asked politely. Are you ready to order yet? The Navi respectfully said. Yes I'll have number 14 and he would like a number 7 please. The hostess eyed Hanabi for a second. It wasn't normal for the woman to order for herself and her man. Sure and what would you like to drink? She said with her professional smile back in place. Hanabi said. I'll have the aged grape juice. She looked over at Naruto. She obviously didn't know what we drank. Naruto got the message. I'll just have whatever tea you think is good, but please, no green tea. He said with his cheery smile. The hostess took the menus and left promptly. Hanabi noticed that she wasn't making eyes at Naruto this time. She must have noticed his fan jutsu. She thought with a grin. Wow she didn't freak about my rock wind blade jutsu. I wonder if she's really a civilian. He thought. He then eyed Hanabi carefully and said. Age grape juice. Did you just order alcohol? Well yes, but it's very weak. She said eyeing him slightly confused. You really don't know much about the noble family and how we live do you? She asked already knowing the answer. Naruto looked at her carefully at here for a moment. What do you mean? I know about the Huga gentle fist technique and your training ground and. She cut him off. It's got nothing to do with being a ninja or jutsu Naruto. She stated almost like she was talking down to him. The RR he really is a moron. I guess I'll have to explain it to him. She sighed. Well, imagine you're she was cut off by an all too familiar voice at the door. Imagine you're the host of a party for nobles. Lord Uga said from the doorway. You will be expected to partake in the pleasantries and drink while performing business to a small degree. One of the easiest and simplest ways to get someone more susceptible to an idea which they would otherwise be opposed is to get them drunk. Since you are the host of the party you are expected to drink first, and among the ninja houses, this is a sign of good faith. You see all the most important members of the party will share the first drink from the same bottle. 
and the host drinks first as a sign of good faith that the drink is not poisoned. After a long party you will be expected to partake in several toasts during such a party and could easily be quite inebriated. That is when you could easily promise something you would otherwise vehemently oppose. That is why it is important that you be able to hold your alcohol during a gathering. So most of the main branches of the families are required to drink alcohol to build up their tolerance to the drinking. Hiashi said stated. The Ashi had taken a look around the would-be council dinner table to see it a total mess of scrolls all over most of it. The majority was covered in teamwork tactics and most of the rest was jutsu scrolls. The only food on the huge table was some bread and a saucer of oil that probably wasn't very good as only one piece of bread had a bite out of it on the plate and the rest was untouched. Naruto must have been going over tactics and jutsu with her before we arrived. What a relief. He thought as he relaxed. Hello, Hiyashi-sama. He said with a cheerfully smile while waving over the mounds of scrolls. It still feels weird, though I am 28 years his senior, having someone that can level a mount and call me master makes me feels out of place any way I look at it, even if I am a clan head. Hiyashi thought. Hello Sage Naruto. He said calmly to what most would see, but Hanabi saw he was relieved. The Ashi walked in and took a seat next to Hanabi, followed by an overly happy Tsunade. How are things going you two? Tsunade she said while wiping a place clear of scrolls next to Hiyashi. The hostess came in with two more menus and said. It is an honor that you grace us with your presence Hokage-sama and Lord Uga. Can I get you anything to drink? Tsunade smiled mischievously. A bottle of white light gold and two drinking cups please. The Ashi just realized what she ordered and it wasn't good. White light was 197 proof. Oh crap, I thought she'd order high grade sake. Not that stuff. It is not even recommended for human consumption and it is used mostly to make high grade fire bombs. Oh Kami did she say two drinking cups? He panicked and started sweating. That Yuga had a feeling that he was going to give Naruto a first hand showing on that lesson he just taught him. Hey there, what brings you two over? Naruto asked over a scroll he was showing Hanabi in his hands. She eyed him carefully before speaking. Well Guy sensei convinced Hiashi and I that we should come here for lunch. She smiled. Naruto looked up from his scroll and rolled his eyes. He knew quite well what Guy probably said to them to come and check up on him. Hanabi who just bowed her head slightly when both of them came in and directed Naruto's attention back to the scroll he was holding and asked. So what is the point of this three-pronged formation attack if we only have two members and why would you put me at the head of the arrow? Shouldn't that be where the strongest ninja of the three should be? She questioned. Hiyashi eyed the young sage. My girl has a valid point there. Oh no, here comes that waiter holding my doom in her hands. That Yuga Lord was getting nervous enough for Hanabi to notice if she was paying attention. The hostess came back with a 20-ounce clear bottle with a golden sun symbol on the front of it and set it in two drinking cups in front of her and Hiyashi. Thank you. The Hokage said with a smile. Naruto waited for the hostess to leave before answering Hanabi. Well for a three-prong arrow attack you're right, but this one's a feint. If you look farther down the scroll you'll see that the ninja in the center runs slower than the two on the sides. The ninja in the center gets the enemy to focus on him and then lets the other two ninja overtake him in the charge. Now on a non-ninja enemy the center might actually be more dangerous, but on a ninja he will realize this a turn to defend himself from the two side ninjas, leaving an opening for the ninja in the center to attack. Do you see now? He asked. The Nabi looked at him carefully while squinting and said. That still doesn't explain how we will use this with only two people in our squad. She eyed him critically. Naruto laughed. And here I thought you might have had that figured out from peeping on me in Kinohimaru training. He said while still laughing. The Nabi thought. Kami how did he know I was watching him? Maybe that's why I didn't see any of his powerful jutsu. It was because he knew I was there. It's possible. He did know me and father were outside the Hokage's door after all. She was only slightly embarrassed this time. At least I'm getting better and not being totally shocked, but still. She thought with only a hint of pink in her cheeks. Tsunade smiled. I'm glad he has been working on his main weakness. His slow mind has been getting a lot sharper over the years. In some ways he's becoming a lot more like those stories of wise old sages, but enough of those thoughts. It is time to torture Hiashi for not believing me about his daughter being fine with Naruto. Tsunade grabbed the bottle of white light and poured a shot for her and Hiashi. Drink up. She said with a friendly smile as she downed the shot. Hiashi was aiming the clear liquid in his cup with a mental battle raging in his head. Oh Kami, I hope everything I have heard about drinking this stuff was over-exaggerated. He picked his cup up and smelled the liquid. No smell, maybe it was just exaggerated. He shrugged slightly and downed the shot. Fire like he'd never felt in his life before raced down to his throat and turned his stomach into an inferno. Okami dotted her. T.S. Suo. Bad. Outwardly he ashy held on to his composure well. He was perfectly still, but to the trained eyes of Tsunade, she could see him ever so slightly trembling and a tear forming in the corner of his eye. 
Tsunade poked him in the shoulder to get his attention. Hey slacker come on you're already two shots behind. Come on this bottle isn't going to empty itself and half of it you're going to be drinking half of it. She said to let him know it was an order not a request as she was shaking the bottle back and forth in front of him. That you got aside in defeat stealing himself for death by alcohol poisoning. Hami please take me quickly. Hum is my will in order. I think it is. It might not be. What will be on my tombstone? He thought. Here lies Hiashi Yuga the fool that tried to drink with the fifth Hokage. Hiashi Yi. Tsunade warned none to subtlety. Hiashi gulped and lifted the cup to his lips to double the inferno in his stomach. He managed to hold another two shots before fainting. How unlucky for him that Tsunade was a medical ninja that healed him just enough to revive him. Erg. Hiashi groaned as Tsunade sat him up from the floor. My body's on fire, but that breeze is nice. He said clearly not all there yet. Breeze? She said just now noticing. She looked up to see what looked like a mini Rasen shuriken. Her eyes narrowed to a scowl as she dropped Hiashi with a sudden thud back on the ground. Naruto and Hanabi had been going over scrolls oblivious to Tsunade's torture of the Hugalard. Naruto? She yelled. Naruto jumped and looked over at her as the pebble lost its wind blades and fell right into the cup of oil for the bread with a splash. What the hell is that? It looks like the blades of the Rasen shuriken. She yelled so loudly the building shook. I told you that you are never to teach that jutsu to anyone. Especially Kanohimaru. I made it SS raked forbidden jutsu for a reason. You damned wart sage. She grabbed Naruto and hit him pinned on the table with one hand on the front of his shirt holding him down and the other cocked ready to send him to hell and six feet under the ground at the same time. Tsunade Chan. He said nervously. It is not what you think. He pleaded. She scowled at him. You have five seconds to explain before I send you to Kami. She warned. Anabi was hot, so I adapted the blades of the Rasen Shuriken into a fan to keep her cool. Honestly I wasn't planning on teaching Kanohimaru that jutsu. I know it would kill him from the backfire damage until he learned to throw it. He said slowly opening his eyes from the squint he was wearing to see if he was still alive. Tsunade felt slightly embarrassed and let go of her killing intent said. Oh. I guess that was kinda of sweet. I guess. In a Naruto type of way. Oh thank Kami, if she had been sober that would have never worked and I didn't want to use the other method to calm her down with Hanabi here. She would totally have taken it the wrong way. He thought clearly relieved. Anabi was a statue she was so shocked. She had always looked up to Tsunade as a strong conservative woman, but seeing her squatting over her unconscious father in a very unladylike manner. She was forced to think of the Hokage as a drunken brute. The Ashi was on death's door. Oh there light at the end of the tunnel. Beautiful white light. He said as he gripped at the empty air while laying on his back. Tsunade scowled. Oh no you don't. She grinned wickedly. I'm not letting you die yet. There is still over half the bottle left. Just then the hostess came in with the two steaming plates of food Naruto and Hanabi ordered. Her eyes still squinted like before. Naruto made a crossed finger hand seal and said. Scroll library seal. All that was left on the previously mess of a table was a single 10 inch long scroll that was 2 inches thick, the bread, oil, the bottle and cups. Naruto thought that Hanabi had seen enough of the things here. He didn't want her to be a human statue. Though this was kind of normal for him hanging out with Tsunade, he knew others didn't understand and would freeze up and not speak for some time afterwards, as the Hokage could be rather intense when she let her true personality hang out. Tsunade Chan your food's here. He said loudly. He then walked over to the hostess quietly and whispered. Please send this message to Sakura at the hospital. Tsunade has done it again, come to the bounty of the earth and sea, and save the poor guy. He asked quietly as he could. Naruto thought. Okay I've taken care of Lord Uga. Now it's time to get Hanabi out of here and get some real food. I'm so hungry, but she's been around me for a while now and isn't getting shocked so much anymore. I have to have her perfectly still to use the yellow flash jutsu to get us out of here. The young sage thought. I really hope she doesn't hate me long for this, but it's kind of my only ace in the hole for shocking her without fail. Naruto sneaked back over to Thehu Gairis and whispered softly in her ear. I'm so sorry. Naruto gently grabbed her wrist leading her out of her chair ever so smoothly. Then he pulled her wrists over her head and gently pinned her to the table. His eyes went from brilliant blue to crimson red with slits for pupils. He kissed her softly twice on the neck. Now you're mine. He whispered in a dark and sinister voice that was not his own into her ear. She totally froze. Yes. I knew it would work. I just hope she forgives me later for scaring her. He thought. He quickly reached into his pouch and pulled out a rune-covered kunai, and they both disappeared as he used his yellow flash jutsu leaving Hiashi at Tsunade's mercy. Rock Lee was finally coming to the conclusion maybe Naruto wasn't trying to hurt that cute girl and was just about to leave when he had a total dahabu. Naruto was again standing in the exact same place with the exact same cute girl wearing the exact same horrified expression. Rock Lee's mind started racing. I must fight my urge to engage him in combat for this. It's. 
It's probably a misunderstanding. Naruto would never hurt a leaf shinobi. Okay, okay calm down. Think of something total random. He drew up a picture of a bass drum lying on the ground. I'm okay. He thought. On the bass drum written in green paint was the words I hate pickles. Okay that's definitely weird this should really help me take my mind off Naruto and that girl. The image grew. Then Kakashi was sitting on the drum holding a pickle. He then flipped the pickle over in his hand like it was a kunai and stabbed it into the side of the drum with a low squish sound. Um is it just me or is it getting a little too weird in my head? Kakashi then pulled out another much larger pickle almost a foot long and looked over at Lee. Lee? He said in a ghostly voice. Yup it's getting too weird when your own images are trying to talk to you. Rock Lee thought. Lee I've devised a new version of the 10,000 years of pain jutsu and I'm going to test it out on you. Lee. The ghostly Kakashi said as he pointed the pickle at Rock Lee. Rock Lee mentally froze. He had nearly shocked himself to death. Back in the real world Rock Lee suddenly fainted, collapsing into a heap. Not long after that guy sensei charged up with his normal huge dust trail. Lee, we have got to go. The Hokage is pissed at us and put us on shit to tail. He said it so fast he sounding like a squeaking rat on an adrenaline rush. He grabbed the unconscious Lee and charge off into the distance. When the young man finally came to he screamed at the top of his lungs, Kami Nuo. Please no pickles. I started and looked over at Lee who was propped up in a corner of a filthy public bathroom. Pickles? Guy sensei asked questionably. The only pickles you'll find here is the one we are in my boy. He gave Lee the two thumbs up and his normally bright smile, but it looked like he had a brown clump of something stuck to his teeth. Lee looked around at his surroundings. This had to be the dirtiest bathroom he'd ever seen. Ai Sensei was on the other side of the room with a toothbrush and hand covered in filth while looking at Lee. Behind him was a small three-foot section of the floor that was sparkling clean. Ai Sensei tossed him a toothbrush. It seems the Hokage has given us a new training regimen. We are going to clean all 42 public bathrooms with toothbrushes. He thought. Um, what could the Hokage be training us in? Ninjutsu. No, that couldn't be it. Stamina. Maybe, but I don't think so at our level. Chakra control. Definitely not. You know this seems a lot like. We are on shit detail aren't we sensei? He finally asked. I suddenly faltered with slumped shoulders. Yes, Lee, it seems our sense of justice got the better of us again. It turns out that that girl Naruto was with is actually his new teammate for the Chunin exams and that not the worst of it. She actually Hanabi Huga. He said. Lee looked at him questioningly before asking. Hanada's younger sister. I've only seen her a few times at big social events, but I've never spoke to her. He said curiously. Ai Sensei spoke. This floor isn't going clean itself Lee, get to scrubbing. He eyed him sternly. Lee quickly got on his knees and started scrubbing. I began again. No, you wouldn't have. She is the Huka clan heir. Lee looked puzzled for a moment, I thought that always went to the eldest child. He said. I was still scrubbing a particularly stubborn stain between the titles. Yes. Normally it does, but the Hugo Lord decided Hanabi was more fit for it. Hence why we are scrubbing crap stained floors for the next two days for interfering with them. He stated. Lee grimace. Two days. Naruto was standing outside Ichiraku's Raymond with a very beautiful and very shocked Hanabi in his arms. He thought. Wow she smells nice. Why didn't I notice that last time? She smells like honey and cherry blossoms with a hint of grass clippings. Ahem maybe my hunger is getting the better of me. Just the smell of honey is getting me in a longing mood for food. Hanabi-chan. He said as he removed his arms from around her, but held on to her wrist. He reached over with his left hand to poke her in the ribs a few times. Hanabi-chan. He yelled rather loudly. Hanabi finally snapped out of it. Okami what was that? Jinjutsu. It was so scary. The way his eyes turned red and that voice with so much killing intent. It was stifling. Wait we are back at the Raymond stand. I hope he doesn't think I'm eating at this dump. She thought in dismay. Naruto dragged Hanabi over to a stool at the bar and said. Come on this is my favorite places in the world to eat. You're going to love it. Hanabi wasn't happy about this, but put on a smile as she was expected. Yo Tucci, two bowls of Maizo Raymond for me. What would you like Hanabi-chan? He asked with his arm up. She took a long time to look over the menu. I'm probably going to regret this, but I this Raymond doesn't sound too bad. She thought. I'll have the duck Raymond please. She said in a reserved manner. Right away. Tucci replied with a smile. They were both sitting there perfectly quiet for a while, which was very uncommon for Naruto. Naruto finally turned toward Hanabi and said I'm sorry I didn't mean to scare you back there with that jutsu. He said earnestly and a bit sadly. I probably scared the poor girl half to death. What was I thinking? I'm such an idiot bringing out some of QB's chakra for that. What if she finds out before I'm ready for her to know? What if she like acts like the way the villagers used to treat me? Like I'm some kind of monster. 
I'll definitely have to be more careful. She's not Sakura-chan who knows the full extent of what I am and what I can really do. He thought sadly. Anabi blinked a few times, she was caught a bit off guard the way he suddenly broke the long silence before asking. Um, which one would that be? The one where you invaded my personal space by snuggling up to me like some kind of pervert blinking me across town. She eyed him critically. The one where you made a fan out of chakra so dense it was visible just to make a breeze. Or the one where your eyes turned red and you made me think you were going to kill me on the spot. She finished stillaying him. Naruto was wearing a look that could only say oops. He thought for a moment before saying. I guess for the two yellow flashes. The pervert snuggle as you called it and the red eyes won. He said with his usual smile while rubbing the back of his head innocently. Oh. She said with a slight lift and dip of her head. Wait, did you say yellow flash? The same yellow flash as the fourth Hokage's. Isn't that time-space ninjutsu that takes an incredible amount of chakra and control to perform? No way will I believe this knucklehead can do jutsu of that caliber. She thought as her eyes narrowed at him. Naruto eyed her expression of disbelief for a moment before giving her a small poke in the center of her forehead and said. Yes, order up Naruto. The Raymond master said as he placed two bowls in front of Naruto and another in front of Hanabi. Great. Naruto said as he broke his chopsticks apart while shouting. I'd attack Amasu. He started inhaling his food. Hanabi watched the sage in horror. Good lord, how can anyone stand to be near him with the way he eats? He's got no manners at all. She thought as she watched him pull up another bundle of noodles and blowing on them a few times before cramming them into his mouth. Naruto gave her a sideways glance noticing her slighted look. He finished his bite of food before leaning over near her ear and said. You are being rude to the Raymond master, at least try your food. He whispered with force. Wait a minute he's slurping his food and I'm being rude. The nerve of this guy. Dot sigh I guess I'll try this lowbrow food. I wouldn't want to be rude. She thought dripping with sarcasm as she eyed him. She picked up her chopsticks and broke them apart before bowing slightly over her bowl and said. I'd attack Amasu. She grabbed up some noodles and blew on them softly a few times before tasting them. Kind of salty but the noodles are. So weird. They are thick but still soft all the way though and the onions and garlic in the broth really complement the duck's flavor well. It doesn't taste gamely at all. This is actually pretty good. She thought as she bit the noodles off in her mouth. Naruto laughed. You know that's not how you're supposed to eat ramen. You're supposed to slurp the noodles up into your mouth. Not bite them off. He stated with a smile that was obviously trying to hold back a chuckle. She sighed. You know it's not ladylike or noble to slurp your food Naruto. Even you should know that. She stated like he was a child. Naruto smiled. You're a lot more gutsy than Hinata Dot will give you that, but you're still going to get outranked just like she did on this matter. He stated in a matter-of-fact attitude. He rrr I'd forgotten that he dated my older sister over a year ago, even still there is no other noble here. How could I get outranked unless he is going to try to say his sage title outranks me when we are both genin? She thought as she smirked at him confidently. Let me ask you something Hanabi, when you spar with your father. Who is the master, you or your father? He asked while slurping another mouthful of Raymond. She looked at him not really knowing what he was getting at before stating. My father is the master of course. He looked at her carefully before saying his next words. So when you sit at a Raymond stand dot who is the master you are the chef. He smiled. She smiled right back at him and said. I am because I am the customer and I have the money. Naruto grinned back playfully before saying. So you think money can buy personal skills? No, but it can hire that skill, and why should I learn a skill when I can hire another that already has such a skill? She stated. Naruto was still smiling. So you by hiring him are admitting that the person you hired is the master, and you are not at that skill. You're sitting at a Raymond stand arguing over this manner. By paying for your Raymond you have admitted that he is the master Raymond maker and you are not. He stated. He turned to Tucci who had heard the whole conversation. Hey Tucci, how are you supposed to eat Raymond, slurp it or bite it off? He asked. The Raymond master never looked up from his work before stating. Any five-year-old knows you slurp hot Raymond to cool it off while eating it. She sighed in defeat. It's okay. He has a point and I knew he was baiting me the whole time, but I wasn't expecting him to have such a meaningful Raymond speech set up. Kami he is weird. She thought then sighed. I guess you're right. I don't know the first thing about making Raymond she said as she rolled her eyes. But it's not like Raymond is going to save the town though if we are attacked. His face suddenly relaxed from its smile and his thoughts seemed far away like remembering a long lost memory. What if I told you that a bowl of Raymond is the reason that this village was saved more than once? He said looking farther off than the back of the Raymond shop. Hanabi chuckled. Then I'd say I'm not that gullible, Lord Sage. She said playfully remembering what the Hokage called him when she was in an uproar. He raised his eyebrows while looking down, nodding his head solemnly. I guess you're right. It was a silly story anyway. 
There was an awkward silence that hung between them for a long moment before Naruto spoke. Well I think I need to get back to training. He said replacing his look with his normal cheery smile. It has been a while, but I think I should go see the king first. He said as he stretched as he got up from his bar stool. Wait hold it. What king? We aren't a monarchy. We don't have a king. What the heck is he talking about? She thought in confusion. Naruto left some money on the counter and started to walk away before turning back around saying. I'll be at the training grounds in an hour and I hope you're not going to be hiding this time because I've got something to give you. He said and then leaped away. That's it for today, I will stop here or cats gonna be cry for food, you know it's time to their feed them, by the way I hope did you enjoyed video, if you do please leave a like, share and subscribe, make sure to stay hydrated, thanks for watching.